How's it going? I'm going to comment on a comment that was posted under a video because I think it is an important point that needs to be made and it's something that holds people back. So to the individual that posted this comment, please don't think I'm picking on you. I actually agree with some of your points, but I also generally disagree with the theme and I want to tell you why. So let me read the comment. So the comment is, I don't think money and success even bring happiness or satisfaction past a certain point. What I see is a lot of successful people or see in a lot of successful people is that they spent their whole life on the rat race treadmill trying to achieve the next big thing. And one day they are old and 75 and they realize they wasted their whole life. To me, people who are constantly chasing money and success are no different than a dra drug addict trying to get their next high. At a point, if you want to achieve real happiness and satisfaction, you need to kill the desire or kill desire and learn to be content. Some will say that settling and whatnot. Some will say that is settling and whatnot, but a lot of them are just insecure and they think they need all this money and success to be accepted. In reality, no one really cares. And in the grand scheme of things, the guy working the nine to five and the guy with the huge business will be easily forgotten when they die. And then the second part of that is, that's why I can't stand to listen to all these big CEO $10,000 a day guys because they are plugged into the matrix and they haven't broken free from the societal brainwashing. All right, so I'm gonna break this down and I'm gonna give you my opinion and tell you why I disagree. I, dis I agree with general points, I disagree with the theme in general and, and I'll explain. So what I agree with is that, that uh, past a certain dollar amount, that incremental happiness is minimal I believe that absolutely. Um, also, I believe that some people do get trapped in the rat race and later they're unhappy. I think it can have to do with money, but also it has to do with other factors such as simply getting trapped in a thing that they don't love. I also agree with the last point that basically in the end you're dead and it doesn't matter. That's true. If you wanna think about it, you're one of seven or whatever billion people, you're pretty much meaningless and insignificant if you want to look at it that way, I agree. But at the same time, you could be one of 7 billion people and you can actually do something to have an impact in your family's life, your kid's life, in somebody else's life that you know, or in some way revolve around their world or in somebody's life that will never meet you, know you, or even know that you help them. So to make the statement that you're completely insignificant um, or that you'll be forgotten, yeah, you might be forgotten, but that doesn't mean you can't have massive impact. And the individuals that were impacted may never know it came from you, but you, you made impact. My general argument would be that to make impact and have change, money helps drive that. And so the association of individuals being bad or evil or only chasing money, I think can be flawed. And those that have made a bunch of money are generally the ones that are able to get the message out of other people that are doing great things that don't make money. They can help spread the message or in their case, they can actually have real impact. And this sort of gets to this general concept that I have that this type of a mindset is very risky in that it will hold you back potentially from having a big impact. And by that, I mean this mindset that generally money's bad or money's evil or none of it matters. Another thing that maybe to jump around for a second is that I think there's also a risk of, a, of generalization. So what I think a lot of us do, whether we realize it or not, is that where a lot of kind of dislike, hate, whatever you want to say about another group tends to come from not knowing the other group and having ever interacted with the other group. I think where a lot of conspiracy theory thinking comes from is that very same thing. It's some big group out there and individuals, we've never met them, but we just generalize about them. And we think that they do a certain thing, but we've never actually talked to a single one of them. And therefore we, we come up with theories about them or beliefs about them, but we don't know them. And my point in telling you that is, I think it's very easy to say, ah, in general, these individuals, that are making a lot of money or have built these big businesses or have amassed billions of dollars, they're evil. But we don't know any of them. We've never talked to them. We have no idea how they actually think. They're just these, these people foreign to us that are written about by journalists and other individuals, but we don't know the person. What I tend to find is that when I meet a lot of people and especially successful people as defined by money or building something bigger, it's pretty rare 
that they are all consumed with making more money. I think it's pretty universal that once you make a certain amount of money, most people will agree that the additional money is somewhat insignificant. You can't really spend it. You can't really do much with it. It just becomes something you have to manage and grow. And that too is a generalization, but in terms of the people I meet, I mean, half the people I know that are super, super successful, they're not talking about money. Nobody's talking about money. I mean, yeah, those groups exist and I've met those kind of people, but in general, they're not. They're talking about the thing they love. And the thing they love is building a business or investing or investing in other people's businesses and other people's ideas or whatever the case might be. And that's just not really the conversation that happens. But I, what I think happens is the news and the media spread examples of the outliers, which are the crazy people and the crazy examples of people that do no, add no value to society whatsoever with their money and do nothing with their money. And that's sort of from a, a good read in a headline and in an article, that's the stuff that gets attention where the vast, vast majority of people that have gone out and spent their life dedicated to building something because we're talking about business, they've worked so hard to grow themselves to be able to build a business of a certain size and through doing that and accomplishing that and providing value to the world, generally that results in some amount of windfall and financial success and potentially big income. But you often find those individuals are not solely focused on the money aspect. They're focused on the competitive nature of building the business or reaching more people or whatever the case might be. And so I think this generalization is really diff uh, dangerous. And that's the point that I want to make. And so where it becomes dangerous is I think that the, the underlying, well, where it becomes dangerous is, is this mindset will keep a lot of people from ever accomplishing anything. And... So if you have an association with money being bad or evil or wrong or whatever, or if you associate money with people that you've seen, maybe it's somebody you knew that was just a lousy individual and they had money, or maybe it's somebody you've seen in the news and they've been propped up as the example story. If you buy into that and you, you focus on that one individual and, think, and make an association, ah, money and success in business and a big business, that is similar or related to this individual of poor behavior and poor example and therefore all business all wealth it must be bad that's going to pretty much keep you from getting it i can pretty much guarantee it because you're going to to some degree self-sabotage yourself now on the flip side if you believe that you could also be the person that builds a big business and does something phenomenal with the business both for the the people that work for the company as well as the people that you serve that pay you that eventually drive the size of the business and the wealth. And then with that wealth that's created, the profits, you could use those profits to have impact and do very interesting things. And someday if you sell your organization, you can take that money and you can do something different. So another thing that I would be slightly concerned about here is to make a generalization and say, hey, this thing is bad you could be missing a massive opportunity to be exactly the opposite of what you may not like and the people you do not like. Money moves the world forward. It gets things done. It solves problems, problems in your life and problems in other people's lives. So I, get, I think the watch out here is just be careful that that mindset doesn't hold you back. But I actually think there's an even bigger conversation here. So I think there's a risk of saying, or reaching a place in life, and I'm not projecting this onto the individual comment whatsoever, because I, I actually see a lot of very, very valid points in what he said. But here's another risk. And the risk is that you had a dream at one point, you started building something. And maybe whatever you started out building, whether it's a problem you're trying to solve, a business you're trying to go into, it just didn't work out at first. Maybe you hired your first couple employees and they weren't awesome employees. Maybe you tried some marketing and the marketing didn't work. It's very easy to then say, ah, marketing doesn't work. Oh, no employees are any good. All employees are bad. I can't build a business on employees. Or, oh, business is impossible. That's for other people. I, they do, you can't start a business these days. You can't be successful these days. It's very easy to have a few missteps or a few things not go in your favor and then deem all of those things to be impossible or they don't work. My examples were employees, marketing, etc. Well, the same thing can happen in terms of maybe there was a dream like, hey, in life, I'd like to eventually make this amount of money or do these things or build this kind of business or go into this career. And for whatever reason, that thing didn't work out. 
And therefore, and, and what then happens is we lower our standards. We had a dream for where we were going to take things. We sort of get beat up and then we sort of dial it back and say, well, if I could just get this or do this, that'll be good enough. And we keep making these little concessions, one concession after another concession. And what ends up happening is in the end, you haven't engineered the life that you actually wanted, that you dreamed of way back because you kept making concessions. I think that's the big problem. And I think sometimes this mindset of, of money's bad, big business is bad, it's a concession. It's a form of concession. You got beat up. And again, I don't know, I'm not projecting here, but I'm just saying, I see it. You get beat up. It's freaking hard. It is really hard to go get traction and build a business. And you, you got to just keep grinding it out. And in that time where you sort of get beat down, you, you can tell yourself the feel good story about, you know what, this stuff doesn't even matter. I don't care about making money. Money is what, like, look at all these other people. Their lives suck. They're chasing the wrong thing. They're going to be on their deathbed and they're going to say, oh, I wish I'd spent more time with my kids. Oh, I wish I had done this or that. They're, they're, it's not worth it. Like, I, I, it's, it's not worth it. And, and then as a result, you buy into that belief. But the, it wasn't because you really thought about it and said, ah, oh, that's the that's the belief I want to hold. Rather, it was a concession that kind of moved you in that direction and made you start to believe that way because the alternative that you originally wanted became too hard. And so you feel get better about taking the approach of this is not something I want because wealth and money and big business, it's wrong, evil. And again, I'm probably being a bit wordy here. That decision was not driven because you thought about it and made that decision in life. It was driven because the other thing didn't go in the direction that you might have wanted. I see that often. And so the bigger point I also want to make here is I think that and it's, it's two points. One is most of the people I know doing very, very well. Again, we don't have conversations about money or maybe you talk about buying a house or a car, but like that's like one percent of the conversations you ever have. Hey, the conversations around business and other things and the love of doing that thing and building that thing. And, and so the, the example here is the broader problem is that people are trapped in lives of not getting what they wanted. They get trapped in lives of a, a career. They get trapped and the career is not what they wanted. The, they, and they wanted to be in business or maybe they get trapped in a business that they don't feel like they can make that business be what they want it to be. They can't take it in the direction they want, serve the people they want. They feel trapped because they've got employees that they've got to pay and they can't figure out how they could transition that business to something else. Or they're in a job and they can't figure out how to get out of that job because now they have a mortgage and they have kids going to school and the spouse wants to stay home with the kids or whatever the scenario is, they become trapped. And therefore, from potentially an outside perspective, it looks like maybe somebody's just doing something for the money and they're miserable. They might be miserable. It's probably not about chasing the money. It's probably about being trapped in the thing they don't love. And that's the most awesome thing about business is you have an opportunity to go create the life that you want. You have an opportunity to engineer the outcome of your life. It will be freaking hard. You won't get everything you wanted. You won't get everything you dreamed of. You'll have to keep showing up. It's going to take longer than you think, but you get the opportunity. That's the most incredible blessing that we have as pretend individuals building businesses is you can guide this thing where you want. And if you're guiding your business in a direction that you don't love, you can pull back and go in a different direction. And it may cost you some profits and it may mean you don't grow quite as fast, but you can do it. You get the choice. You're not trapped. That to me is what happiness is. And when you feel that way and you're building something that's of quality and you're delivering a great product and a service to other people and you're helping people, or whatever the case might be, you're going to make money. And you might wake up one day and be extremely successful financially. And then if you're that individual that, that doesn't buy into money providing any additional happiness or, or building a big business is evil or whatever, give it all away. Help other people. Be the person that doesn't do that, that doesn't act like all the other people that you don't know, that you feel are probably sort of throwing away their whole lives chasing something that doesn't matter. I'm just saying it could be, to be done totally different. Don't look at another group and say, well, for that reason, I'm not going after any of those things. You can go after those things and do something through doing something you love. And then when you get the outcome of a big business or wealth, you can do even better and bigger things with that. I just I, I wanted to focus on this point because I think it's a massive thing. I think the real problem is people are living lives that they're massively dissatisfied with. I do not believe that you can be happy in life and hate what you do for a living. I don't, I don't. It's where the majority of your time is going to go. 
The money is not going to fix that. And that's a bit of what's being said in the comment. I 100% agree. The real thing is you've got to go engineer a life doing the thing you want to be doing that gets you excited about working on a problem and growing your abilities and growing your skill set. When you do that, you may, you may happen to go into something that pays a lot of money. My dad's an artist. Artists get paid. Being a great artist, you make a good living, but you're never going to get rich. So if you do, most don't. And, and, but, but he's doing something in life that he's absolutely passionate about and he loves. He will never retire. He's doing his thing. That is, that is a phenomenal outcome. I just happen to love business. And fortunately, if you're good at business, it comes with money. When I'm talking to my kids, I never talk like you need to own businesses. You have to own a business. What I care about with my kids is go do something in life that you can be passionate about. They'll make you a better person. Hopefully, it'll be impactful on people in the world. But pick that thing you love to do. And if you happen to love something that comes with money, all the better. If it doesn't, well, so be it. Because at the end of the day, what you're doing and what you're building is going to be the thing that drives happiness. And the reason I think it drives happiness is I think humans are generally wired to want to make progress, to want to solve. Like that's happiness is sort of having hope, hope that something's going to be better, different out in the future. Well, hope is oftentimes comes from being in a position of knowing you have some amount of control. You could make yourself better. You could learn something to go achieve something, solving problems, feeling like you're contributing, feeling like you have purpose, feeling like maybe you're respected. Those things lead to happiness. The money thing doesn't. But the money is a byproduct of getting a bunch of those other things right, depending on the career that you chose. And so those are some of the watch outs. Just be, be careful on, uh, and I know I went on a long video here, but I think it's really, really important. I see so many individuals that are really sharp and they, ha they hold these positions in their mind and they keep them from, they're the very people that if they had a bigger business and had money, they would have real impact in the world. They would do something really interesting. But because they hold those beliefs, they'll never accomplish that. Or you see a whole nother group of individuals that have some success in their business and then how in the world do they do it? They sabotage it all. And then they kind of get to another level and they sabotage it all. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I think it comes from these mindsets. Like you're, if, you, if you hold in your mind, I want a big business, and you also hold your mind at the same time that money's bad, you are going to inadvertently do something to screw it all up whether you realize it or not. Because you're not, you can't march to building a big business and having money if you don't believe in that. And so you'll end up doing something, I theorize, that will screw it all up and you won't, and why do you keep screwing it all up? It could be because of a belief like that. That's a generalization, but that's a, a general belief that I hold. So that's my two cents. I wanted to comment on it. I think it's a dangerous position. The, uh, the bullet points of the comment, a lot of stuff I agree there, but the theme is what would concern me. So I hope that was helpful, maybe a little interesting. If you disagree with me, comment below. And if you have any questions, comment below. I think this is a really important topic and I, I've thought about it often. So see you later.